Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me on my program once again. I appreciate you wherever you are joining me from. If you are joining me from any part of the world, I appreciate you and I thank you very much for your contributions to my channel. Please, each time you watch my video, try to share to your neighbors and friends. Share it to every platform where you belong. And also, go to the comment section and make your comment. Say it where you, put, you, you want it. Just put down your comment and express yourself. I learn a lot from the comment section and I go to comment section every time to see your comment. I must say I appreciate everyone that has subscribed to my channel and those who are commenting. I appreciate you so much and I respect your views. Thank you so much for your contribution. Today, once again, we are going to talk about the situation of the contraption called Nigeria, the insecurity more especially. As you all know, it is no longer news that the contraption called Nigeria is not secure. It's not safe for any human being to live. It's not safe. It's not safe for any human being to live. I mean every human being to live. Not even safe for the northern not safe for the southwestern, not safe for southeastern. It doesn't matter your tribe, it doesn't matter your religion. Nigeria is not safe for you. Nigeria is not safe for anybody. And the only way Nigeria can be safe is a breakup of that other country. When you break it up, the interest will die. Then people can now go their separate ways in their region and build a formidable force. Have a nation that they can be proud of. That is why we are asking for the disintegration of that very contraption. Because the more Nigeria remains one, the more the insecurity increases. As you can see, the insecurity have increased to another level. Now, the abduction is abduction of the elites. They are no longer abducting the ordinary men. It is now changing, going to the abduction of the elites. And that is better, I think. Maybe they will begin to reason. Maybe they will begin to reason better. Because when the poor masses are crying and shouting about the insecurity, the government seems not to care about it. People seem not to care about it. The elites, it doesn't matter where they are from, from the southeastern part of Nigeria, from the southwest, from the north, they don't care about it. So long as it's about the poor masses, they don't care. But when it happens about them, they will be more serious about it. And as you know, the insecurity has taken another level. Now, they are going after the elites. They are going after the elites. We will tell you that the government we have in Nigeria is the government of terrorists. A terrorist government is what we have in Nigeria. Some people are doubting it. You went and took somebody who is a terrorist apologist and made him a president and you are expecting security. Are you not dreaming? Are you not dreaming? You can never have any security. Never ever have any security. You can see the man who called himself a sheikh going to meet the bandits in the open. Going to meet the bandits in the open. Even when he's going, he goes with DSS members. Goes with the security. Goes with the army. They go and meet the bandits where they are with their arms and ammunition. He even come out to say that they are much more equipped than the military. Come to the national television to defend these bandits, defend them, telling us that they are better people. Even trying to compare these bandits with the IPOB who are fighting for a legitimate cause. <laughs> what a joke. That is the kind of impunity you see in Nigeria. When you see Sheikh Gumi come out to compare, to try to bring IPOB down, telling us that the bandits are better than IPOB, telling us that the bandits, all they do is just they kidnap and they take ransom and they never kill anybody. He was saying it proudly on the national television and nobody invited him for anywhere. Nobody came against him. There was no, no uproar against him. A country you call a nation. A country you are talking about security that there will be security instead of arresting this man and going after the bandits they gave him security do you know that shegumi is going about with the government security a man who has committed a lot of atrocities a lot of evil maybe you have not forgotten about the video i'm going to play the video for you to see what shegumi the defense shegumi is putting for the bandit in the national television and nobody said anything about it watch 
IPOB, IPOB is attacking the police, is attacking the army, is attacking INEC, government institutions, killing our men in service. And the hacksmen are kidnapping children not to kill them, to get money. So how can you compare somebody who's killing our gallant men in the armed forces directly, attacking them, to somebody who's kidnapping children to make money, not to kill them? Look, we, have to, we need some fairness in what we are doing. Students and when we say hacksmen, look, hacksmen, let's, 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 let's finish. They're by, by literal studies in universities, they say there is 9.5 million nomadics, pastoralists, and hacksmen in the forest. So when you have some few thousands are kidnapping, you can't generalize and say all hacksmen are bad. In fact, the hacksmen are the first victim of these criminals among them. And they are ready to cooperate with the government. They just need the support. They don't, not, they don't want profiling. When you see a hatman, you say automatically it's a criminal. So with good engagement by the government, in this case, I see it as, as easy as drinking a cup of tea, really. After seeing all this, that Shedumi is saying, which are pure lie and fake, the government never invited him any day. Instead, they gave him security. Instead, they protected him. Instead, they made him the negotiator for the bandits. They give him money to go and give the bandits. They have elevated him to a level of a negotiator, a middleman between the government and the bandits. That is why he can come boldly to make a defense for the bandits. Tell us that the bandits only take money, they don't kill. He said the bandits don't kill, they only take money. But I'm going to play a video for you of a confession of what the bandits are doing. The people they are killing and how they are killing them. You're going to hear it from the right sources. In that them not, where Shegumi said they are not killing, they are only taking ransom. Watch the video. Okay. Um, let me say, at the early hour of 2 a.m., armed bandits entered uh, Bethel Baptist High School in uh, Damishi town in the uh, Kujama district of Chikun local government, where they made away with about 140 people, students who were in their dormitories. And uh, fortunately for 28 number of students, they escaped from the hands of the adoptees. But as we speak, we still have 125 in the hands of the adopters. Now, it's very sad that this is not the first time institutions like schools are being attacked in my constituency. If you remember, the Greenfield University is still under my constituency where 16 students, 23 students, were kidnapped. And at the end of the day, in their press and desperation to get ransom payment, which was over 300 million, which they demanded. And of course, there was no way the parents of those students could raise that money. So to show how serious they were, they killed five of the students. I visited some of the families, and uh, they told me their frustration and their trauma. At that time, the remaining were still in the hands of the adopters. And at the end of the day, the parents had to rally them to get money and pay for these students to be released. As I speak to you, the school has been closed. There is no more academic, academic activities going on there. That was on, that was, that happened in April. Now, this one that happened just uh, yesterday is just one of the numerous incidences. I will tell you that in, if you look at the, the, way, the, the, the way they are happening, they are such in sequence that it's almost every day. In Iri, that's on third of this very month, a village called Iri in Kaju local government, 16 people were adopted, three were killed. As I speak to you, these people are still in the hands of their adopters. And what they are asking of is 100 million. As I speak to you, April 23rd, I have my paper. Two nurses were adopted who were on duty in the Don General Hospital. I have visited the family. And 
from their conversation with the adopters, they told them that they've gotten staff. They are, they are never going to release those nurses. That those nurses will be working for them to treat their wounded members who are wounded in the battle with the military or with the security agencies. So the hope of them coming back, I don't know what magic can take place. But I will tell you, my constituency is overwhelmed. On an unsad note, let me also say, it, two security personnel were killed yesterday who wanted to uh, prevent the, uh, the kidnapping in the Bethel Baptist High School. So two of them were killed. But authoritatively, I can tell you, the number of security men that went there were just around 10, while the bandits were numbering even in hundreds. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you again, in Kakao, just 10 days ago, they went to Angwama Adaki. They kidnapped nearly 18 people, and they demanded for 200 million from that community, Angwama Adaki. 200 million. The chief called me, and he asked me if I could assist them. Now, gentlemen, I, I was taken aback because I didn't even know where to start from. Where do I raise 200 million to help? So we started negotiation because the best thing to do is to negotiate. So they negotiated and they said they must bring up to 150 million. And the man who was negotiating with them told them that the community does not have that money. Now in their desperation, the next day they said, okay, they want to teach him an example. They told them where they would go and pick the cops of, some of the adoptees. Five of them, they killed them and dropped them at a particular area. I have the pictures I can show. They were killed. Um, I'm, I'm very, very emotional. Because I ask myself, what is the joy of being elected when I cannot prevent the killing of my people? When the government is overwhelmed if I tell you what happened, the trauma I received yesterday morning, when this thing happened, a woman just called me, I didn't even know her number, and let me say, ordinarily sometimes I may not even pick a number I don't know. But I just said, this call has been consistent, let me see, let me know who. The moment I picked the call, the voice of that woman was, is that how you people are going to allow us to be killed? Our children will be adopted? Is that what you are in government to do for us? But her child was one of the children that was taken from Bethel Baptist School. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are in my shoes, if you are in my shoes, what will you tell them? What will you tell them? Times without number, if some of you can remember, and I, 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 I don't intend to massage anybody's ego, honestly, the government has failed in terms of providing security for my constituent. I will speak particularly for my constituent. If there is anything said we are doing our best, I will say their best is not good enough for us. Their best is a failure. Their best, which they term as best, they can give Nigerians, is a failure. And let's say it. How long shall we continue this way? Are we going to continue to live like this? As I speak to you today, to prevent this thing happening, Kaduna State Government has closed and tightened schools. Very soon, children are going to write Waek. And they don't have lectures. They are going to sit at home to write. Are we thinking of the future of these children? Now, if you look at their own case, it's even better because they are talking of writing exams. How about those children that have been adopted? Will they think of exams? They are thinking of their safety. And every leader of concern should think of their safety. How are they feeding there? The trauma they will go through. I'm very sure some of them may not come back same again. They may not be the same people. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, and I will say it, the military is overwhelmed. 
the federal government is overwhelmed. And my greatest call that even the greatest of nations seek for assistance. Even America, depending on what they want, they seek for assistance. Why can't we in this country call a spade a spade and say we, have, we are overwhelmed? Let nations that are willing come to help us. Why? Is it because we are hiding something? Yes. If we are not hiding something, why can't we call developed nations that are willing to join us? China does a lot of business with Nigeria. Is it for economic interest alone? Why not for military interest? Why not for protection of property and safety of Nigerians? Are they interested in only building roads, which is a profit venture? What are they giving back to the nation? What are they giving back to the nation? So for me, except we are hiding something, that we don't want developed nations to come. I remember, gentlemen, there was an American citizen that was kidnapped. American, I don't know how they did it. He was, he was, he was, I mean, the, how would they call it, how would I call it? The, the, the Americans sent whatever they, what they did, and they rescued him from the hands of adopters, one American citizen. When will the life of one Nigerian matters to us? When? Is it when we are all killed? For me, if there are moles in the military and they cannot be exposed, it means that the moles are stronger than the government. That's an evidence of failure of state. Do you want to be like Mexico? We are cartel drug cartel, kill at random, at will. Today, if I tell you that that place that these students were kidnapped from Kalapanzi Barak in, in Kaduna State, it's 10 minutes drive. 10 minutes drive. If you adopt 120 students walking on foot, how long will they go in 10 minutes that they cannot be rescued? I am not a military expert. But if you are called a general in the military, it is assumed that all tactics of conventional warfare and unconventional warfare, you should be an authority. Has the military run out of ideas? Because I ask, they will tell you they know where these children or all these kidnapped people are taken to. Now, they will say if they attack, there will be collateral damages. So attacking that place is the only solution they have on the table. So we don't have a solution. For me, the military, the police have failed the members of my constituency. They have failed us. Our fate is now in the hands of God. I want you gentlemen, please, to ask these very important questions. How long shall we continue before we get a solution to the adoption of our children? Is it until 2 million or 200,000 schools are attacked? It's, it's not one too many that we should see tangible results. The children of Greenfield University spend nearly eight weeks in the hands of their adopters. Today, we are talking of Bethel Baptist High School. Uh, school. Only God knows how long they will remain. And even that of the Greenfield University, the parents paid ransom. You saw it on telly. I saw it on channel. They said they paid. I'm not an advocate of paying uh, kidnappers because it will embolden them more. They will buy more weapons. But I think that's why we have a military. There must be strategies that we can cope this insistent killings and adoption. Ladies and gentlemen, I will stop on this note. But there are a lot of questions to be asked. And the press is the best vanguard to ask questions. When will this end? I remember with sadness, the children of Kagara in Major State are still with the adoptives, the Islamic school in Kagara. They are still with the adopters. Children as young as seven, eight years. And we come here and pretend all is well? Do we really have a country? Do we have a government that will protect us? 
Ask any member here when you want to go to the northern part, as long as we are passing through Abuja Kaduna Road, we are scared. Some of us go with convoy of security. So the poor man should die. Because the poor man cannot afford the security. He has to go through public transport. As I speak to you now, this morning as, as I was in the chamber, authoritatively, they attack members of my constituency in Kujama, that same area where Bethel Baptist High School were adopted. They killed three people. Yes, near Nigerian prison school in Kujama, prison farms in Kujama. This morning, this morning, Please, let me ask this question. If any of you have passed through Abuja Kaduna Road, how many stops, military stops do you see? I can't remember seeing any. Yes, I can't remember seeing any. And I want to ask this question. Let's be very sincere to our Christians. When Kaduna Airport was closed, and VIPs were free from Ab Kaduna to Abuja, or from Abuja to Kaduna, where were there not attacks? Because VIPs were on the road. Why? Why were there no attacks? Do you remember any attack? That the VIPs were, were conveyed from, Abu, from Kaduna to Abuja? It never happened. Members of the press, please help us. We need answers. Nigerians want answers. And the government has a responsibility to answer us. Because this is democracy. Including myself. Nigeria deserve answers from us. If we have failed, we should be able to say it. There's nothing like it is a shame to say I failed. I failed, you look for help. The moment you don't want to accept that you failed, then you are not going to look for help. Then Nigerians will be the one to suffer for it. Gentlemen, I will just pray. My prayer for you, please, I want you to help me. Pray for these children for their safe return. Because I'm not seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I pray they will all return intact. Thank you very much. That is where Nigeria has degenerated to. And you still want to call yourself a one Nigerianist. Somebody from the southern part of Nigeria, especially. I pity our brethren, those Christians who are in the north. I pity people, Christians mainly, who are in the north and some Muslims who have conscience who are in the north because they are in for a very big trouble they are in for a very big trouble because there is no government in nigeria the government what you call government is terrorist in power and the only way to get away from this is a breakup thank god the Ududua group are standing up their governors are making some important move very important move governors are making some very important move speaking on one voice for their people to get out from this very this very contraption called nigeria but in the southeastern part of Nigeria, I don't know what they are doing. They are still sleeping. It's a shame. The southeastern part of Nigeria is still sleeping. They have not made any move. Neither are they ready to make any move. It's really disappointing and very shameful. I pray that the southeastern part of Nigeria wakes up before it is too late. The southeastern part of Nigeria, the elites, the governors and the, the senators, I hope they wake up before it is too late because the southwest are awake already. You can see some the Southwest holding their meeting, making some moves, taking steps every blessed day. Taking steps, making moves. No matter how they move, even if it is not strong, even if they don't mean it, but at least we can see them making moves. But in the southeastern part of Nigeria, they are doing nothing. They are just desire, expecting their, their, their crumb from the, their master's table. Expecting the crumb from the Fulani Jewish table. Still scared to death. They can't open their mouth and say anything or speak against the very government that is in power. What a shame. What a shame. I don't know what, what, what would have really happened. I don't know the kind of charm they have used to hold the Southeastern governors captive. The Southeastern, the old Southeast, the people who are elected there and who are called as a politicians and elite, they are in captivity. In serious captivity, only God will deliver them. But when I remember Mazin Nandekano, I glorify God. I glorify Chuku Kukabiyama for giving us somebody like Mazin Nandekano who has fought for us and still fighting for us. Who has placed certain things in place that we can remember and will still be happy. When we remember that we still have the ESN standing for us, we will be happy and we will say that is hope. That is the only hope the southeastern part of Nigeria have, the ESN. Don't forget, ESN are stronger than ever. 
waiting only for the command of one person, Mazen and the Kano. ESN are doing their job. They are doing the needful. Don't think that because Mazen and the Kano is, is in captivity that they are not working. ESN is working more than ever. They are working now more than ever. Stronger than ever. Thank God to Mazen and the Kano. Chuko Gabamu knew what is going to happen. That was why he gave us Mazen and the Kano. And Mazen and the Kano took up the assignment. He never relents. He never betrayed. He never goes back. That is why we will continue to pray for Mazen and the Kano. Every days of our life, we will continue to remember him. Continue to protect Mazingan. Michuko Kabia are going to straighten Mazingan. Michuko Kabia are bring Mazingan Ghana to us very, very soon. That is for sure. There is no doubt about that. That Mazingan Ghana is coming out with the Biafran flag raised high. He is coming out very soon. Michuko Kabia are protect our Dudua brothers so that they can continue the fight the way they are going. Keep the fire burning. Let the Biafran also keep the fire burning. Very soon, the southern part of Nigeria will be free. We'll be free very, very soon. It doesn't matter what they do. It doesn't matter what they say. They will kill us. We will kill them at the end of the day. Biafra and Odudua will emerge. Thank you so much for watching, wherever you are watching from. And remember us. Bye-bye. See you again on the next video.